This episode we're going to look at publishing our game mode and some stuff that comes with it. The first one is when you're going looking at picking your hero, there will be end up all of the heroes available. What we're going to do is limit the heroes that are available. When you create a new add-on, this file is not currently there. So if we go to our project folder, we go into scripts, NPC, and here we have all of our TXT files. And we want to create a file called herolist.txt. Now I have one that I already made, which I'm going to copy and paste in here called herolist.txt. Now let's open this up in the text editor to see what it ends up looking like. So it's pretty much just a key value file and it has custom hero list at the top. That's just the name of the container. And then you have NPC Dota hero Sven as the key. And then it's set to minus one. Minus one means infinite. If you put this to one, it means he, the hero is selectable and I can disable Sven by zero. By default, once you have this hero list file in your custom game, every hero will be set to zero, which is mean that they're turned off or disabled. So when I go into my custom game, now all of these heroes will be available. I'm not exactly sure with the number of instances, minus one equals infinite. I'm not exactly sure that does that even allow you to pick the same hero because in Dota you can only pick one unique hero. You can do that if you want, set this to minus one or to one. I think it works both ways once you have that value of like set uh, the hero, being unique hero pick, what we were doing in a previous episode. Now, when I do this and I launch up my custom game, I will end up being able to pick only one of these three heroes. But before we do that, is that in previous episodes we were using this file called gamesetup.lua. If we go and have a look at this, we were doing like Force Hero, uh, Skeleton King is in tools mode. So we were doing like debug mode and all of these rules that we were doing all along here. And we have a release build which will go in here. So we should really be putting rules in here that are adequate to what our game mode is. Some of these stuff like disabling the day night cycle might be useful because the lighting changes and the fog of war that heroes get a lot of stuff varies between night and day so you might not want that there so there's like the day night cycle disable there's some stuff that you can literally just copy and paste from down here into your release build or if you just have your own if you're not even using this file you can just use any sort of uh, rules that you want to put yourself so we're actually going to purposely write in if is in tools mode we're actually just going to comment all this out so that we'll just get the normal setup that Dota has so that whoops I zoomed out a little bit what we can do is we can just comment all this out so it'll never get executed if you want to know what it'd even be easier than commenting it all out is to just go back here to where it's been called so the init game mode function, I'm just going to comment that out so that we have the example of what it would be like is if we had just the default rules that were there within Dota. Now that our custom game has started up, we can go in and see, look at our add-on. It's called your add-on name and you want to change this to whatever your add-on is called and we'll be looking at that pretty soon. And maybe you even want to change the names of the teams. So we click accept here or to start up the game to connect and as you'll see only these heroes are available now if you have some sort of custom layout that you're using um, do I have a custom layout if you have some sort of custom layout I might come like this but the other heroes are shadowed out you can't pick them so you can still only pick Sven Sniper and Raid King so this ends up being just a way to limit your heroes for how you're picking it now what I'm gonna do is just because we're testing here I'm gonna uncomment this and we're going to go in here and create another. Well, this file is already created for us. So if we go back to our project folder and we go into the resource folder. Now in here, there should be a file called addonenglish.txt. Maybe there's a different one based on the language that you have or whatever. I don't know exactly. Maybe English is the one that's default for everyone. So if we go and we open up this file and we have a look at it, what this defines is the tokens for the string names in game. So if we just pick Sven here and we just go into the game mode, I'll show you an example. In our game mode, if we look at our abilities here, our items, Sven has a blink dagger that has this really weird name. It doesn't have really any name. And it says 
Dota Tooltip Ability Item Custom Blink. And if we use that, that's our key. And if we can set that to any value. So pretty much what we're doing is we're setting the English name for some key. So this is a key that's for the name of our add-on. And as you saw earlier, it said your add-on name. So if I want to change this to the ad name of my add-on, I'm going to call mine Arena of Clarity. And what will end up happening is where that string, the, the text is, it will be replaced with Arena of Clarity, where add-on game name is. Now, if we take another example of our custom blink, it says Dota Tooltip Ability. Dota Tool Tip Is it Tool Tip in one word? Yes, it's one word. Tip Ability Custom Blink I think it's Item Custom Blink We'll see Yeah, it's Item Custom Blink So you have to have the name right So that's our key the name of our key and we can just say custom blink and we save this now what will end up happening is when we open up our game mode this text will should be replaced by this so now we have custom blink the text is here now sometimes for some bizarre reason uh, Dota does not refresh this add-on text file for whatever reason I don't know why but one thing you can do if this doesn't refresh see now it says custom blink and when i ping on it it says custom blink what you can do is you can just disconnect from your match and then reload it in again that usually ends up working sometimes it doesn't it's kind of weird sometimes you have, dota is just weird it doesn't want to parse those key value files for some reason but this will work once you publish your game mode or doing whatever now let's say you want to support other languages there's other languages that you can create here and you would go say create a new text file go add on uh, Spanish I think is the other one or and then it would be .txt and you pretty much do the same format here except the value on the right hand side that you would change that to whatever it would be in that language. I don't know all of the languages there's somewhere on the wiki I'll link it down in the description to see the languages that are supported and the ones that you can have. To do is go back to our asset browser. This is the window that opened up at the very start. Now we were clicking into the hammer and what we want to do instead we can close down the hammer in the background we don't really need it anymore. Now what we want to do is open up this guy which is called the workshop manager. We click on this and we get this menu that pops up. This will list all of the custom games that you currently have published. If you have none published yet and this is your first time, you will have no items on this list. Now what you can do is you can click this button at the top left, new submission, and you click this and you fill in the title of your game mode, uh, tutorial, I call that, I spelled it wrong, whatever, it doesn't matter, and you put in your description. You wanna put in an image here, uh, it could really be anything. It has to be a certain size. So let me see if I can find a picture on my computer. Um, I think I have one here. Cat cleaner. I think this is one. There we go. <laughs> and uh, we want to set it to public. I think public is the default. The friends only one is supposed to be that only friends on Steam can see it and play it. But hidden is only that yourself can see it. But I think that the friends only one might be broken now for whatever reason Valve never fixed it. But we can go submit. Now when we submit what's happening is that we're uploading this online onto the Valve servers. Now when it's completed this pop up comes up saying it's updated on the workshop. And it will open a page in your browser at some link to it. If you can't find this link you can literally just go to your Steam account and go to workshop submissions for Dota and uh, you'll end up finding it. So when you publish it, eventually you can go and change the title and the description. It doesn't really matter when you're entering it in the first time. And it says this submission is awaiting approval by staff moderation. This can end up taking up to 24 hours. It can, from my experience, it's been taking around two or three hours to get stuff approved. So be aware that if you wanna play test this stuff, you need to upload it like two or three hours before you're planning to play test it. This is somewhat of an inconvenience. A lot of the reasons because people are putting up 
there's bots putting up game modes saying like free skins and all this sort of stuff and if your game mode is named something like free something it might get caught by the moderation as well which you can't upload it so the other issue you can edit title and description and all this stuff and add images and stuff later so one thing i want to mention about versioning is that when you put out a patch let's say we're on patch number one and this is after being approved then let's say in the future I decide, okay, I've done some bug fixes, some balance changes, we're doing patch number two. And patch number two is now awaiting approval by Valve. What ends up happening is that as you're the creator of the custom game, you're able to download the latest version, regardless if it's been approved or not. So if you wanna play with your friend, you will currently have patch number two, but everyone else who tries to download it will only have patch number one. And you will not be able to play together because your patches are of different versions and you can't go back to the previous patch either, unfortunately. So the only way, if you're waiting for an approval of your custom game, you end up having to play on a separate account. You need to make a new account and play on that for your custom game and download it there. That's just a way of circumventing this problem of waiting for the patch to be approved by Valve. It's kind of unfortunate that it's this way, but that's just the way it is. Now, the other thing I would recommend as well is that if you go to the patches and you look at the workshop submissions for Dota, you'll end up seeing that there's kind of like a trending tab for uh, custom games so most popular custom games and bot scripts. And if we click into this, this list also kind of comes up in game to show you the most popular ones in the past week and things, stuff like that. Uh, these custom games, you might want to be ranked higher in this so that you get a little bit more of exposure and public, like people are kind of able to find it. When you're testing out your game mode and putting out patches just to play test it, you might want to publish a completely separate game mode. So you see here that I have this file here that's called tuto trial and if I go and I want to pull I can literally republish the same game mode multiple times under different names so when you're going and doing your first real public build that you want everyone to play you want to go and publish a separate one just so that you can get better through this trending tab so if this video was helpful to you if you want to see more custom game tutorials, make sure you subscribe. So one last thing I forgot to mention was in add-on info.txt. You can go in here and there's a, this is pretty much another key value file. So the keys that you can use here are maps. It's optional to put the key that way. So you want to put quotes here with maps. I don't think you even need it. Then you have the name of your map. So this is the file that you've been building for your map in the hammer. So if you were using my map, whatever it is, and then you can say my map two or down here. So this is defining the maximum number of players for this. When players are loading into a lobby, by default, it will have 10. If you wanted to have your game six v six, this would set the lobby maximum size to six and you would still have to set in the Lua code how many players per team. But in this scenario, you could actually have uh, different maps, like let's say my map two, and this could end up being max players eight, and that could end up being your map for like, say two V two, three V three, four V four, or something along the lines of that. But to just keep it simple that you would do this. This can cause problems because if 10 people load into a lobby and then there's only three slots for each player on each team so there's two teams six players total but 10 people load in those other four people can only go to spectator slots so just to be aware of this add-on info.txt